Good morning, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our opening video and thank you for joining again, us again uh, for today's call. I'm Richard Porges, Interim President and CEO at Destination British Columbia. I would like to acknowledge that I'm privileged to be joining you today from the territory of the Wisenich people and the SACOM nation. On today's call, we'll start with an overview of the latest public health uh, orders and some tourism research. Then Salman Hasman Azam, Assistant Deputy Minister with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport, will join us to provide an update on government support programs for tourism businesses. Next, we'll hear from Jim Standen, Assistant Deputy Minister at BC Parks and the Conservation Officer Service, who will take us through some of his organization's initiatives for 2021. And then Leah Poulton and Carla Grennan from Destination BC's global marketing team will provide an update on our current and upcoming domestic marketing campaigns. Finally, I'll introduce you to our new self-guided Tourism Digital Academy, which I hope many of you will find to be a useful and convenient resource for your organizations. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. I'll start with the latest updates from the Provincial Health Authority. Last Thursday, Dr. Henry announced that approximately 322,000 frontline workers in BC will be eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine in the coming weeks. Health authorities and WorkSafe BC have identified high-risk work sites across the province and plan to deliver vaccines to first responders, as well as educational and childcare staff grocery store workers, postal workers, and others. You might have seen a story in the news last night about teachers and support, and support staff in Surrey getting their first dose. These individuals have put themselves at risk every day for the past year to provide essential services. So it's great to see that they're being prioritized for protection against COVID-19 and for prevention of transmission. Health off, uh, officials also confirmed that the age-based immunization rollout is ahead of schedule. As of yesterday, there have been more than 580,000 vaccine doses administered to high-risk and priority cohorts across British Columbia. The timeline for vaccine administration has been accelerated, with BC residents between the ages of 18 and 59 eligible for their first doses by the end of June which could hasten the end of the pandemic in BC and lead to the relaxation of travel restrictions. And yesterday, we learned of a new initiative that will employ more than 1,400 tourism and hospitality workers in mass vaccination clinics, creating hundreds of jobs for our industry and supporting the province's accelerated rollout. However, there's also been some concerning news in the past couple of weeks. Over the last few weeks, there's been an upward trend in new COVID-19 cases and an increase in cases identified as being due to COVID variants of concern. While more and more people are getting vaccinated every day, it's important to understand that the risk for most of us remains high. We've seen this in the number of new cases over the past few weeks, and we've also seen this in the rising numbers of young people who are being affected and need hospital and ICU care. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but we need to remain vigilant for a little while longer. We don't yet have enough protection to keep us all safe. So we need to listen to Dr. Henry, continue staying in our small, small bubbles, following all health and safety protocols, and we need our tourism businesses to remain uh, vigilant, update their COVID-19 safety plans, even after their employees and customers have been vaccinated. We're in the home stretch, working towards vaccina vaccinating a majority of British Columbia's population. However, the higher number of new cases climbs, the less likely it will be that we'll see changes to the current travel restrictions. So let's continue to observe public health recommendations, encourage our friends, neighbors, and colleagues to do so well as well, and keep each other safe. Now let's take a quick look at the latest research. First, let's review the rollout of vaccinations around the world. With more vaccines being approved and distributed, the number of vaccinated people is rising across the globe. And some of our key international travel markets, the UK, 
Washington and California have among the highest vaccination rates, which bodes well for an eventual reopening of borders and resumption of international travel. And vaccination rates are accelerating in our key domestic markets of BC, Alberta, and Ontario too. With more vaccines being administered, I know we're getting excited about what that could mean for summer travel. And our research shows that BC residents are getting excited too. Our latest re resident perception study found that 37% of British Columbians plan to travel to nearby communities in the next four weeks. And 76% of residents are planning overnight trips within BC in the next 12 months. That's up from 70% in the previous wave and the highest since last summer. So what activities do residents feel comfortable engaging in during the next few weeks? As we might expect, right now, British Columbians are most interested in outdoor activities. Not a surprise, although that may change as more people are vaccinated. With the launch of BC Parks Discover Camping Reservation System earlier this month, which Jim will no doubt discuss in a few minutes, it's no surprise that visiting a provincial park is the top travel activity uh, indicated in our most recent uh, study, closely followed by visiting a beach or lake. And residents continue to prefer traveling by car or RV right now, a trend that we're seeing in many countries around the world. Travel intentions are also rising across Canada. In Destination Canada's latest Canadian resident sentiment report, we see that Canadians are gradually feeling safer about traveling within the country. Albertans are the most willing to travel out of province right now with 53% indicating that they feel safe traveling elsewhere in Canada. Again, this bodes well for us as we typically welcome a large number of Albertans to BC, particularly to the Kootenai Rockies and Thompson Okanagan. In the US, optimism for travel is also at a record high for the last year, with about 66% of US residents currently in a ready to travel mindset, and about 62% are excited to learn about new travel experiences or destinations. That's positive news for us once borders reopen. As well as monitoring BC residents' travel intentions, we also continue to monitor residents' concern about welcoming visitors to their communities. In the latest wave of our resident survey, residents continue to express concern about welcoming visitors back into their communities, despite the increased number of people being vaccinated. Currently, 50% of BC residents are concerned about welcoming visitors from surrounding areas. 65% are concerned about welcoming visitors from other parts of the province, and 80% are concerned about welcoming visitors from elsewhere in Canada. So we asked residents what would make them feel more comfortable welcoming visitors to their communities. 89% of residents said if members of their community are fully vaccinated, then they would feel comfortable welcoming visitors back. Alternatively, 88% of residents said they would feel comfortable if visitors proved that they were fully vaccinated, while 85% said if their entire household was fully vaccinated, then they'd feel comfortable welcoming visitors to their community. So the good news is that while with the acceleration of the vaccination plan, we should be able to alleviate residents' main concerns soon, and they will once again be welcoming of visitors. Now let's quickly turn to recent industry performance. There's not much change here. BC hotel occupancy rate continues to be low, 38.3% for the week ending March 13th, 2.1 points lower than the week before. And since early February, domestic movement around the province has been between 30 and 45% below what was seen during the same period last year. For the week ending March 13th, BC saw a 37.5% decline in domestic movement compared to 2020. This data, as well as summaries of other relevant research can be found on our weekly research roundup and on our corporate website. One last research item. This week, our research team released the value of tourism snapshot for 2019. This is an annual publication that summarizes the tourism industry's economic value to British Columbia. The data is from BC Stats. 2019 continued the string of years of strong industry performance pre-COVID. 
tourism revenue increased in 2019 by 5.6% over 2018. And once again, in 2019, tourism GDP grew faster than GDP of the BC economy as a whole. Again, evidence that tourism is really important to the recovery of the BC economy. You can access the snapshot by visiting our corporate website. So that's enough for me. Now I'm happy to welcome back Salman Azam, Assistant Deputy Minister at the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport, who will share an update on some of the provincial government's programs that support the tourism industry. Thank you so much for joining us again, Salman. Over to you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I'd like to thank you and the DBC team for the opportunity to speak today. Um, so I have three uh, quick updates I'd like to share with you. Uh, so if you could uh, go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so first on the small and medium sized business recovery grant program. Uh, so the government has extended the deadline for the small and medium sized business recovery grant program to ensure businesses have the time they need to apply. Uh, the time to apply for the program has been extended to August 31st, 2021. Uh, as a reminder, this program provides non-repayable grants to eligible tourism businesses up to $45,000. One of the main requirements has also been lowered uh, to ensure more businesses are eligible. The previous requirement for a business uh, to have experienced at least a 70% revenue loss at some point in March uh, or April 2020 has now been adjusted. Um, now, a business is required to demonstrate only a 30% revenue loss in any one month between March 2020 to the point of application. Secondly, could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, the Launch Online Grant Program uh, provides up to $7,500 uh, to businesses to help build uh, or expand an e-commerce site to reach more customers and to sustain uh, and grow their business. Uh, in response to a high number of applications, the BC government is investing an additional 30 million uh, into the program. The new funding is in addition to the February 2021 announcement of $12 million. Uh, businesses in the hard hit tourism sector like tour operators uh, or hotels and other businesses in the service industry can now access the grants uh, to build or improve their booking systems online. Uh, as part of the eligibility enhancements, 30% of the grant funds will now be available uh, or reserved uh, for Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses, uh, as well as rural businesses. These changes will help approximately 4,000 more businesses market their products and services online. Next slide, please. And third, uh, I'd like to give an update on the uh, safety certificate program. Uh, as you know, it was a uh, tourism Task Force uh, recommendation. This new certificate program uh, was also recently announced by Honorable Minister Melanie Mark at the Tourism and Hospitality Conference in early March. Uh, as recommended by the task force in their final report, I'm pleased to say that GoToHR, BC's Tourism and Hospitality Human Resource and Health and Safety Association has been leading the work to develop the program in partnership with the ministry. GoToHR has been engaging with industry to design the curriculum for the program. Uh, the program will be an online course available uh, for tourism and hospitality workers and employers. Uh, and we anticipate that this program will be available to industry in May, 2021. Uh, and finally, I'd like to end and flip the slide. Uh, I just want to give a, a, a brief summary uh, uh, at the recent uh, Tourism and Hospitality Conference in March. Uh, a panel of deputy ministers presented uh, and discussed how ministries are partnering together in government's shared recovery priorities. Uh, the panel was led by Neelane Mayhew, our deputy for uh, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport. Um, ha having this group of deputies present together at the conference demonstrates the BC government's commitment 
to an all of government approach to tourism recovery. Uh, fr from a tourism perspective, our deputy minister provided an overview of how government has supported the industry uh, through its response recovery and resiliency approach. Uh, I know that a video of the panel uh, should be available uh, for viewing soon. And uh, if uh, people have questions about the presentation, by all means, please send us, uh, send us your questions uh, by email. And uh, I want to thank Walt and Ingrid for putting on a great conference uh, as well. Uh, so I'd like to stop there and hand it back to Richard. Thanks very much, Salman. We appreciate you joining us uh, again today. And thank you for the work that you and your team are doing to support the tourism industry. And we look forward to seeing you uh, back again on a future call. Um, one more thing I should uh, mention is that if uh, you have questions uh, during the call, please uh, post them to the Q&A and we will be, we'll get back to you uh, this afternoon. Next, I'd like to welcome Jim Standen who has some news to share with us from BC Parks for 2021. Jim has been an Assistant Deputy Minister with the Ministry of Environment for over 10 years and is currently responsible for BC Parks, a key partner of ours. BC Parks manages and protects some of British Columbia's most outstanding natural features and wilderness environments, as well as providing outdoor recreational opportunities for BC residents and visitors. Welcome, Jim, and over to you. Thanks, Richard, and good morning, everybody. Um, just thought I would uh, acknowledge that I come to you from the territory of the Chiquette people um, around Kamloops. Um, I just thought that it would be a great opportunity, and I really appreciate the chance to just to speak to you a little bit about what uh, folks can expect from BC Parks this season. Uh, one of the things that the pandemic has certainly shown us is just how important BC Parks and those outdoor opportunities are to the citizens of British Columbia. Uh, that was further validated just now by the figures that Richard uh, put on the screen earlier, around 82%, you know, mid 80s uh, of percentage of folks who would like to or plan to take advantage of BC parks this season. And we certainly look forward to welcoming them. We hope that, uh, you know, as we uh, move through the season that we find ourselves in something that's a little closer to a normal season than last year. Um, this time last year, we were in the process of um, uh, coming out of closure. Uh, this year, we have the advantage of being in a much more stable situation, and, and we look forward to welcoming guests shortly. Uh, we already have some folks uh, staying with us. Some of our parks are open now, but many of them will not actually uh, open for camping until the May long weekend uh, or in and around May. But our two-month rolling window has that uh, some of those opportunities available now. Um, I should point out too that we have heard very clearly from uh, many of our users that they are seeing the pressures on the system that COVID has generated and we've seen um, lots of encouragement of government to um, look at ways in which it can increase capacity and enhance the services and, and uh, and levels of uh, funding for parks. And, and that is a question that government will obviously have to wrestle with as we approach budget. And, and we'll be watching eagerly with everyone else to see um, how government responds to that. But uh, it's important to reflect that we've heard that. And, and as tourism uh, sector operators and, and supporters, um, you know, we've heard from you as well, the similar message. So uh, just know that the message has been heard. So if you go to the next slide, I'll just give you start giving a bit of a, a highlight of both the system generally for those that aren't familiar with it, and also a little bit about what we're uh, up to right now. Um, what you see in front of you right now is just some system uh, facts. We are the third largest park system uh, in North America after the Canadian and, and U.S. national park systems. So we have a lot of ground uh, that the green, as you can see in there, that uh, makes up our over 1,000 parks. Um, of those about 2% of that land base has some form of uh, recreation tourism development on it. So although it's a small percentage of the land base, it's a very important component of our overall system. Uh, we manage our system for you know, a combination of uh, mandates and purposes, recreation slash tourism being a key component of that. Obviously we are a, uh, we see ourselves as a very important part of the broader tourism landscape in BC um, and, and a, work hard to uh, deliver services to our traveling public. Uh, but we also have to balance that with conservation, uh, which is a, you know, a, a large reason why many of the, the, the bigger park complexes were created and cultural values as well, both indigenous cultural values and non-indigenous cultural uh, special heritage areas. So it, it's, it's a complicated balance, but know that we put tourism um, 
very, right up there in, in terms of our overall objectives. And we put a lot of our energy and effort into managing for those specific values. Next slide, please. Um, in, in terms of the specific facilities development end of things, you, you can see some of the figures there on the screen. Um, again, it, it's, it is only about two, two to three percent of our overall land base, but it represents a significant uh, part of the tourism um, offerings in the province. We, you know, we have 11,000 vehicle accessible campsites and roughly 2,000 backcountry and hike-in sites. Um, that supports um, a total of probably, I think we're about uh, well in excess of 2 million campers a year. We have over 20, we're around 26 million visitors every year to when you add in our day use figures. Um, and so obviously, you know, our potential impact and, and positive benefit for the tourism sector is, you know, is, is fairly self-evident. Um, we really do differentiate our offerings between front what we call front country which is in essence within one kilometer of a major arterial road um, versus our backcountry offerings which are much more remote and a little bit more selective in terms of who takes advantage of them and more often than not it's our front country that draws the most attention obviously draws the most visitors and, and has the, the broader tourism impact next slide please um, so just a bit about what have we been seeing um, I don't think it'll come as a surprise to anyone, particularly if you've been out camping lately um, or into one of the parks in the in the peak season, that our visitor attendance numbers, our growth continues um, at, a, at a rapid pace. Over the last five years, we've seen a visitor use growth of about 23%, um, and it continues to grow year over year. You can see the graph here that uh, you can see the trend line. Every now and then you do get a bit of a blip. Um, for example, in 2017, we saw a bit of a decline in usership, specifically as a result of the wildfire season that caused the shutdown of a large portion of the interior part of our system. But as a general trend, uh, as population in the province increases, the use of our facilities also increases. Um, this is particularly acute in places like the Okanagan, the, on Vancouver Island and in the lower mainland where proximity to large urban centers means there's a lot of people looking for recreational opportunities that are in their backyard. And again, particularly with COVID, we've seen that uh, even, even more so than normal where folks who are looking for an outdoor experience tend to go to places like the North Shore Mountains, Seymour and Cyprus. And so our usage numbers there have really grown and, and you will, many of you will know that was the genesis for why we initiated a pilot this past year with day use passes, free day use passes to try and help us manage some of those impacts to improve both the visitor experience, but also make sure that we protect the very resource that draws people. Um, Again, I think our, our growth figures for this year are going to be a little bit uh, harder to come by just because the nature of the highly dynamic year that we had in 2020. Uh, but anecdotally, we're, um, we're quite certain that the numbers have gone up. We just won't have the necessarily have the solid metrics to back up uh, that assessment. Next slide, please. So we are just now uh, in this coming year, in the final year of what was a five-year expansion program. Um, it was a uh, more than $22 million program, which was shared between ourselves and the Ministry of Forest Lands and, and Natural Resource Operations, who are responsible for the recreation sites and recreational trails on the Crown land base outside of parks. We uh, purposely entered a partnership agreement with them because you know, when it comes to the camping spectrum, um, you know, all aspects of it are important and and everybody, um, each user has a different set of expectations and things they would like the system to deliver right from the rustic end that Rec Sites and Trails offers up to the much more highly developed end that we provide. And so that approach allowed us to see system growth across all the various offerings rather than focusing them just on the parks offerings. But we're really proud to say that we've uh, been successful in delivering over 850 sites um, in, in the parks uh, with NBC Parks over the last five years. This year, one of the ones uh, that will be coming online, and I think we're still targeting June to bring it on, is a new 90-site um, fully serviced RV campground in EC Manning Park that we refer to as, uh, um, have called Skyview Campground. Um, that's our first foray into full service. Um, and from all indications, uh, the interest level that we've seen in it show, tells us that it's gonna be a very successful offering. Um, 
again, part of the, the drivers for the expansion were, uh, again, uh, high demand for a um, fairly static level of inventory, and we knew we needed to add more sites to meet that growing demand. We did focus um, particularly on those areas of the highest demand because that's where the pressures were. And again, that was those three same areas, primarily the Okanagan, the um, uh, Vancouver Island and uh, Lower Mainland. And those areas continue to be our pressure points, but that's not to say we didn't uh, undertake expansion projects throughout the province. It's just that's where the primary uh, drivers were that's where that's where the main part of the construction was but all parts of the province benefit from from the program and we were pleased through the COVID recovery funding to be able to receive an additional five million dollars in capital this year which went directly into shovel ready projects across the board um, and across the province it involved all different types of infrastructure from paving parking lots to uh, restoring some trails to um, improving or, or restoring and repairing water and sewer infrastructure um, across the entire spectrum of all, of all the various facility types that we have, we were able to uh, land a, a good number of projects and, and certainly we're happy to um, speak to specific ones um, if anybody has questions about what might have happened in their particular area. Okay, next slide, please. For this coming year, um, we have some, the, again, the fifth year of the program, we do have um, some new things uh, coming online. I did already mention the EC Manning one. Um, we also have Mount Fernie, Mabel Lake, Loveland Bay. Uh, we've got some backcountry in Manning and um, some backcountry in Valhalla. So we aren't done yet. Um, we still have a fair bit of um, additional work to do, but we're really pleased to be able to uh, bring you some uh, increased capacity in some of those uh, very important areas. I know Loveland Bay, for example, is um, uh, an area of particularly high pressure, Vancouver Island. Um, there's a lot of people who have rediscovered camping over the last year who are very keen to go, who prefer to stay on island. And so, you know, the, 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 lim the, uh, I won't say restricted, but certainly the, the number of offerings we have on the island probably don't match up with the demand. And so it's nice to be able to add some additional sites there. Next slide, please. We, uh, we I was asked as we were uh, waiting to start the call, just sort of how things are going. And I'm really pleased to report that um, from our perspective, at least we had a, a, a um, very positive opening of our reservation system for the year. Uh, we normally do kind of down tools in the winter and then restart. Um, and we're restarting again on a two month rolling window, which means you're able to book uh, for uh, a site for two months out from the day um, on which you access the site. And each day we add new inventory the, the, as, as the window rolls through the season. Um, the system performed quite well this year. We didn't have any um, big backlogs. And so far it seems like they, we're off to a good start and I'm really hopeful that we're gonna continue that way. Um, we have already seen high demand. We certainly, we've already, we sold out the Easter weekend uh, in the, within the first day. Uh, we saw a large number of our reservations that were available within that window scooped up quite quickly with our, um, with our more um, active sites fully booked up uh, again by the end of the day or early into the next day. So um, signals are there that demand is gonna continue to be high. And I know that that uh, represents uh, a challenge for folks accessing opportunities. Unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, other than growing the system, which we intend to do that, there's not much we can do other than to provide fair and equitable access through our system, which is what it's intended to do. And we feel it delivers quite well. Next slide, please. Um, as far as what's different this season, um, and uh, I guess from last season, it's not that different, but we will be continuing this year with our uh, preferential access for BC residents. Uh, in this case, uh, unlike last year, um, it's time bound. We will um, allow out of province residents to access and make reservations on the Discover Camping System as of July the 8th. The effect of that is that by July the 8th, um, taking into account the two month rolling window, BC residents will have had first access to all of our peak camping season uh, reservation offerings up into and including the Labor Day long weekend. Uh, at that time, we'll open it up so that uh, any remaining reservations will be accessible to non BC residents. But it's important to keep in mind that even with that reservation restriction, outer province residents will still be uh, allowed to access parks for both day use and on first come first serve access to camping opportunities. So uh, one of the messages that we continually uh, try and drive home and would ask you to 
echo to the extent that you can is to be kind, to be respectful that uh, just because somebody sees someone from out of province, um, that doesn't uh, mean that there's a compliance issue. We want people to be tolerant to the fact that uh, out of province folks will be accessing our system. And we just want folks to enjoy their camping experience and, and not turn it into a, a confrontational situation. Um, the, we, as far as um, how that's working, and, and I know there's been uh, public criticism, media criticism of the fact that all you need to do is um, a test um, through our landing page that you are the RBC resident and, and we've been questioned about uh, compliance around that and, and the effectiveness of it, but we can report that the voluntary, if you want to call it that compliance, the adherence to that policy has proven through spot auditing to be very high. Um, very, very small numbers of folks um, from out of province out of who show an out of province address um, have made reservations. And for those, we go back and we ask them for proof of residency. Uh, most of them are able to produce that proof of residency, and those that don't um, cancel. So we feel that the the system is working quite well, and we're quite confident that uh, it's having the desired effect, which is really to provide first. Uh, opportunities to BC residents knowing that they have that high desire to travel within the province and we want to give them maximum opportunities to experience their own province. Uh, next slide please. Um, just to close off, um, the just one in terms of uh, tourism operators and our commercial um, service providers who work within our parks under park use permit. Um, many of you who um, hold those permits who are on the call will know that um, there was some relief provided last year between ourselves and the Ministry of Forests and Lands um, on base rents for park use permits and for Land uh, Act tenures were associated with commercial tourism. Um, and we we're really pleased to be able to provide that uh, additional support to our operators because they are a very critical and important part of what we try and offer through BC Parks. Um, there is um, some additional um, uh, relief coming, uh, a, a small addition to what was there before it was planned as part of the first rollout. Uh, we're just now completing the analysis on who uh, would qualify and, and getting final approvals on um, the, the second phase of that, of that particular uh, initiative and uh, look forward to being able to uh, provide that to uh, in the next short while here once we get the order and council uh, together and passed. Um, I think I'll leave it there other than just to say thank you again for your ongoing partnership and delivering uh, the services and the recreational opportunities that are so important to us and to BC residents. Uh, we, we Again, we hope to have a much more normal season this year and we'll quite happy to keep folks updated or answer any questions offline that you might have about you know how we can work together to make sure that happens. Thanks, Jim. And thanks for joining us uh, today. That was really helpful. And it's great to, uh, great to see the um, uh, augmentations have been made to the system and the relief, relief that you're providing to adventure tourism operators. Um, BC Parks is a key part of the tourism landscape in British Columbia and a key draw both for BC residents and for visitors uh, from out of province. So we really appreciate you being here. Uh, and it's great to see that BC residents are having so many opportunities uh, to get out to nature and explore our diverse parks uh, this spring and summer. So thank you again. Um, now I'll hand it over to Carla Grennan and Leah Poulton from Destination BC's uh, global marketing team. And I think we're starting with Carla. So over to you, Carla. Welcome back. Thank you, Richard. And hello, everyone. I'm joining you today from the territory of the Coast Salish peoples, where I'm honored uh, to work and play. So we have quite a few marketing updates to share with you. So let's start with the Share Your Love for BC campaign. So as a quick reminder, our goal for this campaign was to raise the spirits of BCers by encouraging the pride they have for BC and also getting them to dream about places in BC to visit this summer. So the campaign kicked off with several local influencers posting personal photos and stories highlighting the reasons they love BC. On February 22nd, we launched the contest and it will end tomorrow, so one, one more day. Uh, and to enter, BC residents are asked to submit a photo and optional story that answers the question, what do you love most about BC? At the end of the contest period, 10 winners will each receive a prize of $500 in gift cards or vouchers that can be spent at tourism businesses in their own communities. 
So today we've received over 10,700 contest submissions uh, with an email opt-in rate of over 60%. And the caliber of photography and stories that have been shared is very impressive. So we've got a few samples. So as you can see, a sample of the photography we received and the images range from mountains and oceans to indigenous experiences and wildlife. And they represent different regions and sectors and are a testament to the incredible variety of experiences and scenery found right here in BC. And our BC residents also shared inspiring, funny and very personal stories about their connection to the land, people and cultures of our province. And I want to note that the story submission was optional to enter, yet 84% of the people submitted stories along with their photos. So again, this really shows the true passion that BC residents have for their home. So there were stories about people finding comfort in nature during the pandemic, memories of their partner proposing to them in a beautiful setting, stories of seeing unexpected wildlife, and so many incredible milestones and memories made right here in BC. So as the contest winds down, we'll continue to keep the BC love going through the new video series featuring residents with diverse perspectives sharing what they love about BC. So the Share Your Love for BC initiative, along with our stay local, support local messaging will continue until we're given the green light to promote travel within the province. So now let's go through our domestic campaign. So for the fort, uh, short term, the domestic market will remain our priority with focus on BC, Alberta and Ontario. We plan to launch our campaign in BC once travel restrictions are eased and we're able to move freely around the province. For this campaign, we'll target couples with no children as well as families. And our research team reported an increase in BC travel by members of the Chinese and South Asian communities in Metro Vancouver last summer. So we've engaged an agency with expertise in marketing to these communities and we'll launch a direct advertising campaign in May. So we'll share the results of this advertising in, in a future call, including what works and what can be improved. So our launch date in Alberta is June, again, conditional on the provincial health orders with a focus on families with kids age seven or older. And for the long haul domestic market, we've identified Ontario as the biggest opportunity to drive summer tourism revenue. And our, here our focus will be more on a flu affluent couples living in the city, particularly targeted into the Toronto city. So I'd like to caution that all of these programs and campaigns continually evolve as we adjust to support the provincial health orders, react to global and domestic travel restrictions, monitor all the BC resident sentiment on travel and visitors, and also align with the Destination Canada's plans, which will be released in April. So throughout our domestic campaign, we'll continue to share reassure content that encourages safe and responsible travel. So let's talk about the creative concept we'll use to drive emotional emergency with our BC audience. So people have been feeling closed off for a very long time. And when our worlds start to open up again, we'll be craving new experiences and perspectives like never before. Thankfully, with the incredible diversity of experiences, cultures and places right here in BC, new adventures are well within reach. This summer, we'll tap into universal human need to experience new things and connect with others. And we'll remind people how rewarding it is to travel in BC. And we'll invite them to be open to more. So this isn't just about traveling further geographically. It's also about gaining new perspective on places you already know. For example, if you visit Kelowna each summer, make this visit a little different by booking a tour with moccasin trails so you can learn about the indigenous peoples who have called that area home for millennia. So I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of some of the campaign creative. And we'll start off with just one version of the 30 second TV spot that we'll launch at the start of our campaign.
that makes me want to travel. Uh, so a couple other kind of the creative concepts or creative executions we'll be doing is placing digital billboards in key areas across lower mainland. We'll also be doing some digital ads and here's just a couple examples of the digital ads we'll be running on the various digital platforms we'll be advertising on. Now for our BC Media Plan, our spring and summer plan focuses on captivating the attention of the BC audience prioritizing uh, effective conversion tactics, so travelers' deals, itineraries to drive immediate travel, then generating leads through bookable experiences. So our BC Paid Media Plan is built around the traveler journey in three phases of captivate, activate, and generate. Captiv captivate activities will introduce the Be Open to More concept through the inspiration videos on TV, social, as well as digital billboards. And in Activate and gener Generate, we'll showcase 10 experiences that every British Columbia should have in their lifetime. This phase will utilize top performing tactics through Google and social platforms, key data partnerships with OTAs and content partnerships with CBC and community papers across British Columbia. I'll now pass it over to Leah, uh, who will tell you about the 10 experiences and explain how you can get involved. Thank you, Carla, and hi, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking with you today from the territory of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. So once we've primed our audience with a captivate message, or if someone indicates they're already moving into the planning stage, we'll introduce them to the 10 experiences all British Columbians should have in their lifetime. We know that BC residents tend to visit the same handful of places over and over again. And while we like to think we know everything about our province, we also love to learn new things and have our assumptions challenged. By piquing residents' attention with a unique experience and then introducing all the places and ways to engage with that experience, whether bookable day tours or multi-day all-inclusive adventures, we can bring an entirely new perspective to travel in our province and ensure we're offering options for all travelers. The goal with this phase is to make trip planning as easy as possible and to create a smooth handoff to our partners who can close the sale. This list takes into consideration the various travel motivators for our BC audience and ensures we cover as much of the province as possible. We've consulted with partners to include the areas or business types that are in need of extra support this summer and also considered strong known travel motivators and how we might position them to drive incremental travel. So let's go through a quick overview of the list. Connect with Indigenous cultures. First, we want to encourage residents to visit one of the many Indigenous tourism experiences available across the province. And we'll work closely with Indigenous Tourism BC to ensure we're promoting areas and businesses that are ready for visitors this summer. Get to know BC's wildlife. We also want to encourage guided wildlife tours or lodge getaways. This experience captures the value of learning about BC's wildlife in their natural habitat with an expert guide. People travel from across the world for an experience with our wildlife viewing providers, and we want to encourage BC residents to experience it for themselves too. Stand in awe of BC's mountains. As we heard earlier on the call, residents seem to be gravitating towards outdoor experiences. BC's mountains, as well as the charming mountain towns that sit among them, provide the perfect setting for adventure. We'll encourage responsible outdoor recreation by focusing on guided, bookable, or lift accessed experiences, as well as a strong, responsible outdoor adventure message. Wake up in nature. Many of us are feeling a strong desire to leave our homes and reconnect with nature and our loved ones. So we want to highlight unique accommodations in soothing natural surroundings. This category will feature all types of accommodation in nature, from guest ranches to lodges and beachside hotels to yurts and RVing. Gain a fresh perspective on Metro Vancouver and Victoria. Major urban centers like Metro Vancouver and Victoria have been particularly impacted by the lack of international visitors. So we'll share ideas for residents and travelers to go deeper with their experience in these cities, to experience local cuisine, incredible hotel offerings, exquisite art galleries and museums, as well as major attractions that residents may have once rebuffed as just for tourists. Take the road trip of a lifetime. Research tells us that car-based travel will surge in the wake of the pandemic. 
We want to seed the idea that this is the year to take the BC road trip you've been dreaming of, whether it's the Alaska Highway or the Gold Rush Trail, stopping in at historic sites, natural landmarks, and Indigenous experiences along the way. Visit all nine BC wine regions. Our domestic audience is motivated by locally produced food and drink, and our wine scene is certainly worth celebrating. We'll challenge residents to tick a few more of BC's nine wine regions off their list this summer. Cast a line in BC's rivers, lakes, and ocean. There was a boost of interest in fishing last year with tens of thousands of new fishing licenses purchased. We'll lean into this growing interest by encouraging burgeoning anglers to book a guided experience nearby or travel across the province for a unique fishing adventure. Follow an ale trail. BC's craft beer scene is hopping, pun intended, with new breweries popping up all the time. The BC Ale Trail Co-op Group has done a fantastic job of creating itineraries to encourage travel to all parts of BC. We'll use craft beer as a hook to encourage city exploration or travel to an entirely new part of the province. Finally, golf with ocean, mountain, forest, or desert vistas. We saw people flocking to golf courses last summer. We'll capitalize on this interest by showcasing BC's world-class golf as a compelling reason to book a trip to a new part of the province this summer, or through a city golf trip lens, we'll encourage people to add golf to their city getaway and encourage midweek golf trips. So these 10 experiences will come to life on hellobc.com as well as through social media, email marketing, influencer and ambassador tactics and paid media. And we hope through your marketing efforts as well. Here's how you can get involved in our domestic campaigns. Consider the concept, be open to more when developing content. How can you show BC residents there's more to experience in your area, sector, or business? Also, consider how you can reassure potential visitors that their experience in your destination or business will be safe and enjoyable. Proactively address consumer questions about new procedures and safety policies that might be in place. Create or curate content that showcases how to engage with these 10 experiences in your destination. And share this and any other content with us at globalcontent at destinationbc.ca. Finally, for businesses who are listening in, submit travel deals through our industry portal at destinationbc.net so that we can surface them on our channels. Thanks so much for your attention and we look forward to bringing our domestic campaigns to life with your support. Thanks, Leah and Carla, for sharing the great work of our marketing team. Uh, it's exciting to see how these campaigns are coming together, and I'm sure we're all eager to see how they're received by our domestic markets once travel restrictions are relaxed. Now I'd like to turn to another initiative of ours, the Self-Guided Tourism Digital Academy, a new resource that we hope will benefit many people in BC's tourism industry. The Self-Guided Tourism Digital Academy is an adapted and condensed version of our in-class academy, and it's completely free. Both programs are designed for BC tourism businesses eager to up their digital marketing game, though the new version is self-guided, allowing participants to work through the material at their own pace. The Academy's goal is to help businesses create a digital marketing plan so they can more strategically develop tactics and reach a wider audience. The curriculum includes search engine optimization and the best ways to leverage it, how to develop and distribute compelling content, and tips on website usability, e-marketing, and analytics. The academy typically takes eight weeks to complete, though you have the flexibility to move through the modules as your schedule allows. By signing up, you'll have six months of unlimited access to eight one-hour videos, one for each of the program's modules, including a PDF and written transcript, handouts and worksheets to support your learning, and a marketing plan template to guide development of your own plan with activities aligned to each week's learnings. Again, the program is free and there's no application required. You can register and start the course at any time. To do so, simply visit the website on the screen. Before we close, I want to thank all of you who joined our presentation at the BC Tourism and Hospitality Conference earlier this month. We covered a lot of ground, discussing our efforts toward pandemic recovery over the last year, as well as current and upcoming priorities, 
including our marketing strategy for 2021 and 2022, the iconic strategy and more. If you weren't able to attend, I encourage you to watch the recording on our YouTube channel. Our time is up for today. So once again, I'd like to thank you for spending the past hour with us. We're looking forward to seeing you on our next call in a few weeks. Stay safe, everybody, and bye for now.